Okay, welcome uh, back. The second part of this module starts, uh, which is on conflict of interest analysis. So, we did the five whys. We you saw new things that we did with the whys then compared to what I had uh, demonstrated. Uh, that was the multi forked whys that you saw. Uh, that is often used also. So, you could try that as well. Uh, it sort of becomes very complex. Uh, so, um, uh, laying it out on a chart like how we did it makes uh, complete sense. Now, for illustration purposes, we have picked one uh, flow of that y and uh, we are going to work with that uh, and then build up our conflict of interest from there. So, that is going to be uh, the uh, demo part of what we are doing for the conflict of analysis for this. Uh, it is by no means complete, uh, it is just one part that we are showing for, for uh, to keep you interested as well as to keep give you a flavor of what it is to do a conflict of interest analysis. Okay. So, uh, what have we? So, we have uh, started with why do students need to share notes. So, that was the first why that you brought in which is a serious problem to tackle and you said the answer was looking for better notes from students, other classmates or uh, people who have paid uh, attention to various aspects. Not like I have not paid attention, but there are other aspects that other people have given. The uh, why for that is, well, we want better learning outcomes, so that I can piggyback off other classmates who take good notes in my class uh, and that is the level that we are interested in solving. And that uh, is why do they want learning outcomes as well to understand a topic better, the, the entire co course, it is comprehensive understanding of the course better. So, we are going to start here. Uh, I am going to hand it off to you. Uh, you will have to first of all build a y to x uh, uh, plot, which is uh, if I change a parameter on the x, uh, which is how a y to x is defined. Uh, some performance parameter changes on, on its own and that is we need to figure out for your particular level, that is what you are going to do. So, over to you guys. So, I guess uh, the parameter would be uh, the amount of nodes that right. are quantity being shared, of, yeah, quantity, quantity of, of nodes. So, sir, uh, should we make a plot or? No, you can use this as if it is a sample plot. So, it is it's just a visual representation, it is not. Uh, it's not a scientific data based plot, so this is just yeah. yeah you so can just like an x axis. Yeah, yeah. Right. So this is the variable that can change, right? Yes. And now we want a, a quantifiable parameter that will change based on the amount of nodes and that has been changed. Yes. Right? What is the performance that you're measuring it up against? So right. performance of uh, learning outcome would essentially be. Uh, your scoring in your assessment, right? Assessment scores. Score, yeah. Okay. Right. So um, it's a good tip to have a measure measurable parameter, so that we can track what is going on. Sometimes you will find that they are high and low, which is fine. Which is fine. We just want to have an understanding of how the the whole thing works. So here our assu assumption would be that with more nodes being shared students would probably score, better. score better. better. Yes. yes. Uh, now, uh, what is the next activity sir? Next activity is boiling down to the particular why that you are interested in, I mean okay. the level that you are interested in, in which okay. in this case is for better okay. learning outcomes. Right. So, you will have to replace the x that you have with the particular level that you are interested in, which is okay. the le learning outcomes itself. Okay. Right. So, I think that would be this outcome is the assessment score. Assessment score. That's what we are uh, perform. I mean, we are assessing the performance. So, yes. so quantity of notes shared and this is the XY plot, right? Right. Now, so we can start with this. So uh, now to find out, uh, you uh, just plot the uh, data. So, okay. so like a quantitative data. Sorry, um, okay. quantitative data is. What is the high side, what is the low side, and what is the high side and what is the low side here, and how are they related? So, you can draw a line like that. Okay. So, in terms of you saying that uh, in a class, if there are n number of nodes being shared hmm. on a day or 
on a on a time scale so if you have a high number of nodes then uh, correspondingly what happens to the score okay and if there is a low number of nodes shared then what happens to the score right. that would be the direct correlation correlation yeah. fine so what is so it no you can just draw a plot there okay uh, like do uh, you know this is the line like that yeah so what is what is the when when you have a high uh, number of nodes shared Now what is the assessment score look like? It is high. Okay, it is high. So I think it will probably be the other oh, way around. Yeah. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Now uh, normally what we do is we uh, flip it in such a way that uh, um, if you have a the good thing should always be on the on the right. Okay. Uh, and the bad thing should don't be on the left. Okay. Okay. So good thing is if. Uh, high scores. Uh, if you have low number of nodes shared, you can put it as low there on the left side. So a flip okay. plot. Okay? okay. So low number of nodes shared, then you get low scores. Right. So that's that's how this works. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you the reason why we are doing this. Okay. So here the y is low number of low scores. Okay. okay low scores. and when we increase keep increasing the, the number of shared nodes okay. Okay. there is an increase in the score, assessment score so as here well. high number of nodes shared high number of nodes shared this will result in high high score high scores okay so now you get this graph right you get this, this plot why why we are doing this is that the ideal uh, scores uh, i mean the ideal situation that you want to be in is that you want the high scores and lowest number of nodes shared because that okay, is optimum optimum that so you are looking le for let's find out why okay. okay so in in doing this node share and uh, if you share a uh, high number of nodes what is the flip side of this what is the negative of sharing too many nodes around uh mm -hmm. the and i say suppose you are the student siddharth yeah. and you get you look at all these notes you have some you copied or photographed eight uh, notes eight bunch of notes so what 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 what's the flip side of that it means that i am getting access to more number of notes that is i am investing more amount of time in time yeah. time yeah so the amount of time uh, for preparation uh, or going through each of these notes actually spikes up which student usually do, doesn't doesn't have okay so so that's why uh, ideal would be to be at low number of notes i get one good notes yes. or two number of notes and i'm done right. right but by doing that i am actually only looking at one or two, one or two. which may not be good sometimes they are good sometimes they are not and i may have missed a few notes as well so this is the rational in this oh. okay so now uh, you can take another note and put a time on that side okay so time for preparation i guess yeah, okay so that goes on the left hand side so that's what your conflict is between so it is a time versus the number of notes shared problem okay, okay. which is what we are going to solve so that's that's how we looked at it okay uh, now a uh, better way of representing which you have seen uh, me show in the in the classes is uh, the conflict model okay so our call the uh, element name value env model as well so we will remove this for a second and uh, okay we will start with the element okay which is in your case um, so we have assessment score so the variable goes there the number not shared number of notes right? shared yeah so it's a student number of notes shared and then there's a high and there's a low and then you can do the rest okay so that's that's where we start so the student um, just to give us uh, who is whom are we, who's who is variable the, are we looking, looking at? at so that that would go here so yeah so you are looking at a student yeah and this guy goes here note shared number yeah. of note shared goes here we have notes so this one so then you can vary the parameter two ways right that's what we did low number of notes shared. and high number of notes shared right. right so low and high very good okay so now you have to tell me 
what happens when the student shares uh, i mean number of notes shared are uh, low yeah, number so of notes shared is low uh, one thing is the time that he takes to prepare mm-hmm. obviously becomes low because low. all he has which to is do, a good thing which is a good, good thing. thing because that way he can just prepare, prepare one time and i'm done yes. okay so that is a good thing less time for preparation less time for preparation okay and that's a good thing so you can mark it with a plus yes. because that's a positive positive right you can even color code it if you have the pens okay so his understanding will obviously be low mm-hmm. because obviously he's only looking, looking at, at one only or two his notes, pers- yeah so. his notes mm, less understanding less understanding of the topic which is related to uh, what you had here the last note is class understanding of the subject or topic right. which is related to that so that is the negative, negative. Side. so that's the negative now <coughs> what's the positive of going with the high number of notes that the more content he gets to read and more understanding he has better understanding of topic okay so positive okay and uh, now the flip side of having high number of notes shared taking more, more time, time for preparation. time for prep now he has to go through not his notes alone but all his classmates notes as well so now our desired result or stuff that we are aiming for uh, as design thinkers is we are greedy people design thinkers so we need both the pluses alone okay so we want better understanding of the topic and less time for preparation so this is what we are aiming for that's the objective of uh, this analysis i usually uh, have a desired result and i put there and i, I point it at arrow so that's uh, in this pa- paste it on these two so any solution you may come up with in the later stages you have to come back and see has it reduced the time of preparation has it increased the understanding of the topic for the student so that would be your desired result that's where you're working for that's that's all the solution any solution you come up with you have to go, go back go back and refer to this yeah. okay so that uh, was conflict of an ana- interest analysis we uh, saw a few points one of them was that we flipped the uh, we flipped the side in which uh, i can probably cannot see this where we will share a graph of this is we flipped the sides uh, of uh, logic so to speak so that we have a sloping line the reason we do it, did that was that we wanted a optimum uh, that is the uh, desired results that we saw in the plus in uh, in both cases have to be on top and so that we can mentally visualize that less time of preparation high scores is what we would desire and we want it with less sharing of notes uh, as the so we want both of these we want high scores with less sha- sharing of notes and the reason we did that was so that we can reduce the time of preparation for our students so this is how we can deal with the uh, uh, five wise multi y analysis combining it with the conflict of interest analysis now with this you can go on to the solve stage which is the next module in that after you're done with solve you always come back and check here and check if the conflict is addressed or not and that ends the uh, analyze stage for us thank you